Everybody, it's Tyler here at Riverbots. Check in with Vex U Team ILL INI coming in from University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign. This row, set of robots here look absolutely phenomenal. Twin robots that they're bringing here. And really want you to focus on all the amazing small mechs that they have in this robot. We'll be talking about some of their design strategy, math strategy, some of their software and programming, and all the great stuff that goes into this robot coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Ryan, let's talk about some of the strategy that went into this robot, both from a design strategy and then also math strategy as we go into it. Walk me through some of the things that your team considered for this game. Sure. So with our match strategy, we prioritize claiming the autonomous period and getting ahead in points as soon as possible. Um, a lot of our small mechs do accomplish that uh, with um, Mogo Rush and our intake lift. We are able to go through the autonomous period quickly and gather up those points. We prioritize speed. We have a nice, rigid, and swift uh, drivetrain. And yeah, um, we want to stay active through um, the entire match all the way into the end. That is why we also have a very quick passive hang. What have you guys learned so far? You played a couple matches here at Riverbots. What have you taken away from those matches so far? I think we've taken away that the autonomous period is um, we prioritize that at number one, and I think it's even bigger priority than we even realized before. Failing the autonomous period and not getting ahead really tanks your score in these matches, especially since Specs use 30 seconds. So we are planning to work on our autonomous period even further and get it um, even more uh, perfect. I would say a major change that we do is probably in our autonomous pathing and our final positioning. So. Um, I think a lot of our mechs are going to stay the same, probably until Worlds where we redesign. But um, for now, I think our strategy and our autonomous is going to shift um, greatly from now until maybe our Purdue competition in March. What are a couple other things you're interested in adding on to? Yeah, so one thing that we did try earlier on the season, and uh, it was really present in a lot of our R&D, was the ability to just use something called Kaboomers. It was something that was used two years ago now in Tipping Point uh, by 4082B. It was for sure showcased there. Uh, we tried it out on some of our initial robots, and it did seem to be a huge boost in our acceleration, at least for the autonomous portion. And we were able to get it working passively. However, with such a small uh, drivetrain uh, width-wise, we decided to just go and go ahead and just remove it. It was a lot more difficult to handle than we expected. In our next iteration and further design improvements, we really want to include that and ensure that we can get to that mobile goal as fast as possible, because that very first action is what determines the course of the rest of the match. Let's pass the mic over to you and talk about some of the small mechs uh, that you all are using on this robot. I mean, so many different like little small yep. mechs that went into it. I'd love to get a breakdown of what that looks like. So Adi, walk me through uh, what you got on your robot. Yeah, so I'm the driver here on Team Illini. And one thing about, I think all drivers can relate to is that we don't want to be thinking too much in the match. We just want to be doing. We, we don't want things to be hard. We don't want controls to be convoluted. We want all the tools used, given to us to be used effectively. So first thing that we use is an Auton, which is our Mogo Rush mech. There's, Compared to tipping point from three years ago, there's less mobile goals. There's only five. Three are contested for in VEXU. Getting control of those mobile goals at the beginning is the biggest thing that'll win or that'll determine a match. So our goal is to get three out of the five mobile goals. And based off of that, we do a strategy differently if we get two or three. So Mogo Rush, it allows us to cover less distance in the autonomous and have get a grip on the goal before our opponents, as well as pull it back and get it out of their reach immediately. Another thing is this intake lift. As we've seen on the field, we have stacks of rings, sometimes blues on top, sometimes reds on top. It d differs depending on what color you are. Either way, sometimes the intake needs to go up to get the top ring, or sometimes it needs to go below. So we have this piston right here that allow the intake to lift to only grab that top ring, or we have this piece of Delrin right here, which will knock the top ring off if we want access to the bottom ring. How does your ring transfer? Because a lot of teams we've talked to, at least on uh, V5RC, are pretty much going to intake straight into the conveyor, but I noticed you got this extra kind of ramp that yeah. goes in for them. It's just a simple transition with just some nice Delrin curves. It just allows r the ring to go up really smoothly and grab up onto the hooks instantaneously. Fair enough on that. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to talk about from Small Max? Um, yes, another thing we have right here 
is our doinker mech. This is simply for knocking goals over. A lot of times what happens is there'll be a goal that we can only control one goal at the time, at a time. So if we want to access our opponents, we drop ours, bring this down, and knock theirs over with this. So that means it doesn't count in a positive corner, for example, which is minus eight points for the opponent, which is a lot. Additionally, it can bring our mobile goals back up if the opponent does the same thing to, to us. So we've got two more mechs on our robot that I want to showcase. Uh, one specifically is the hang at the end of the match. What we found is that maybe you have, we have a lot of pneumatics on this robot, and because of that, it may not be quite so wise to rely on pneumatics as well for the climb. The best thing that we've found to both ensure that we can go under the a barrier, not barrier, the best thing that we've found so that we can ensure we can go under the ladder as well as just increase that maneuverability and make it easier for our drivers to just drive onto the ladder from whatever position is just to lift this backpack and passively uh, hang using these uh, hang hooks. It's something that we've seen a little bit in high school and we were inspired to do the same on our robots. And we found, at least compared to last year where our passive deploys would start at the beginning of the match, that getting that maneuverability in the um, under the ladder is very, very helpful, which is why we've decided to do it this way. And Jonah, too, when you have so many different systems, there's always some more complexity that goes into that from software programming. So talk, walk me through you know, how all that came together. Uh, any major sensors you want to talk about, that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. So we have a multitude of sensors on our robot. Uh, obviously, a lot of teams run odometry on the robot, so I can showcase that here. We did a lot of R&D to ensure that we keep our motto that uh, consistency is key, right? We invested a lot into the design of these Odon pods to be as small yet as concise as possible. We've also increased the redundancy by having two of our X encoders instead of one, like some teams would run. Uh, it also gives us our first way of measuring heading uh, just by uh, using some math on how these wheels rotate differently. We also have two IMUs on the robot as well, which give us heading. And the final way we get heading is using this Y encoder and measuring that rotation can also go set. We average all three of those so we can get the most accurate angle possible. And this is something that we found is if we tune it early on in the season and continue to uh, deploy that, we can have a great and consistent auto as well. So a lot of redundancy that's going into that uh, with that. Have you explored any other options in terms of like pathing or localization at all? Yeah, for sure. So what our team does uh, pretty well is, like I said, R&D, being able to develop those solutions, which is why if we can ensure that these redundant solutions give us the best possible data, we can then use that to uh, create paths. And the best way we do that is through our spline generation. Uh, really, it's just uh, off the robot, we're able to create our paths and select points, select uh, control points for our different splines and curves. And this robot is able to figure out uh, where it is, where it needs to go using uh, path, uh, Pure Pursuit, which is a very common uh, algorithm these days to be able to follow paths. And finally, just have a really consistent auto, make sure that we can get every single ring uh, that we want to without having to waste time with a lot of different turns and straight, uh, straight paths. I L L I and I, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about this. I love the creative uh, juices that have gone into this robot here. Uh, so good luck, of course, here at uh, this competition. But we can't wait to see how you continue to do. Uh, I believe we'll see you uh, at Purdue in a little bit as well, too. So great stuff coming with that, where you had uh, finalists last year. So I know big things and big expectations for that. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for telling us more about your machine. Thank you. Thank you so much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.